if I were to just pick out these two groups of stars on the diagram by themselves, which of these would have the larger radius? All right, everyone is choosing A, which is exactly right. So the um, pattern that we can see, uh, the patterns we see in general in the HR diagram, they correspond to specific physical properties of the stars. So the first one we'll discuss here is radius. And in general, it's true that the larger radius stars are on the upper right-hand side of the diagram. The smaller radius stars are on the lower left. And for all the stars that are on the middle in the main sequence, um, they're smaller on the um, low luminosity side of the chart and they're largest at the high luminosity end. Um, so this main sequence is really important. It's uh, where most stars spend most of their lives. So when we just look out into the sky and measure a sample of stars, 90% of them are main sequence stars. Um, and that we know that this is, you know, a kind of part of a star's life stage is because we can actually observe stars in different parts of their life stages. And we've actually even been able to observe specific changes in actually human types, um, which is usually not something that's possible in astronomy. Um, so we'll talk about that later in the class when we talk about the death of stars. Uh, but for now, I wanna highlight a couple of specific categories that are on the HR diagram. So in addition to the main sequence, um, we, we categorize the red dwarfs part of the main sequence um, by themselves. So we have our red dwarfs and then technically these stars in the middle of the main sequence, we also call dwarfs. So we call them, you know, white dwarfs, the star is one, or the sun is one. Uh, and then the other categories that are not on the main sequence are the giant stars, the super giant stars, and the white dwarfs. So all of these are different evolutionary stages of stars. Uh, as stars are born, they land somewhere on the main sequence, and then they evolve in these other categories, giants, supergiants, or white dwarfs, um, at different times depending on their mass. Okay. So the mass is another really important um, physical property of a star that we can you know, assign on the HR diagram. And the general trend is that larger mass happens at higher temperatures and higher luminosities. And uh, let's see, the kind of corollary to this is lifetime. So when we look at the lifetimes of stars, the highest mass stars on the main sequence uh, live for about several million years, which sounds like a long time until you compare it to the lives of red dwarf stars, which can exceed a hundred billion year lifetime, according to our models. That's longer than the age of the universe, so we've never been able to see any red dwarfs go beyond their main sequence life stage. 